today we're going to take a look at linear and absolute value inequalities. Um, we have looked at linear and absolute value equations. So um, for the most part, what we're about to do, we've done before with one small adjustment. So inequalities are actually statements that one quantity is either greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or not equal to another quantity. They can be solved much like equations with one extra feature. When you multiply or divide by a negative, the sign changes directions. So a less than sign would become a greater than sign, for example. Greater than sign would become a less than sign. Actually, that's what I wrote down. complete, I put the less, the uh, not equal to sign here, um, because it's technically a, a true statement, but we won't encounter that. Usually not um, a big deal to have that piece there. The other pieces are the ones that are affected by sign changes, because they have direction to them. Um, and I'd like to justify before we continue on why signs change uh, when we multiply or divide by negatives. And so I'm going to do just a real simple one. Um, let's say that you had negative x is less than, than 7. Um, and let's actually say that you do what you guys like to do most of the time, which is to actually get it to say positive x by moving it. We've done that a lot. We ask questions. Do we, look, do we want to move it to the right or to the left? And we usually look at which one's going to give me positive signs when I'm done. So if I were to add the x to the right, so now I have 0 is less than 7 plus x, and then I were to subtract the 7 to the left, I would end up with this statement. And that red's not a good color. Let me change that. It's a little bit darker. Um, this statement right here at the end, if I read it, backwards, like read it from the right to the left, is equivalent to writing that the x is greater than negative 7, which is exactly what would happen up here if I were to divide by negative 1. And I switched my signs. Okay, so... If you try to keep the values positive, it doesn't really matter. Um, you're going to end up with not needing to divide and multiply by negative ones, potentially. But if you do have a situation where you're multiplying or dividing by negative one, the direction of the sign changes. Okay? All right. So let's take a look at solving some of these equations or inequalities. They solve just like equations with this one little extra piece going on. And that piece doesn't affect every problem, of course. So on the first one, I have w plus 2 is greater than or equal to 4. My goal is to get w alone, so what would I do? I would subtract 2. You got it. I didn't multiply or divide at all, so the signs changed. I don't change. They stay the same. And then 4 minus 2 would be 2. Now, there's an extra part on here that says to graph. Some of the problems that you have on your homework will ask you to graph. Some won't, so I just decided we were just going to graph them all. So you'd have some really good experience at feeling comfortable with that. Um, in your homework set, they're going to actually have the number lines drawn for you. Um, but what I'd like to show you is what happens when you're just drawing them yourself. Um, you're going to plug, or not plug, you're going to put whatever value it is that's in your inequality on the number line. Or you would look for it on the number line if it were given to you. And then you need to figure out, am I shading to the right or to the left? So I need to shade the part of the graph that includes numbers that are greater than or equal to 2. Would that be numbers to the right or numbers to the left? It would be to the right. So I'm going to shade. And of course, if you're doing it and you don't have a color that you're wanting to use, you can just you know, sort of embolden the line, make it a little bit darker. 
so that indicates your shading. Now, one of the things that, um, depending on which you know resources you use and how you interpret things and so forth, there's a couple of different things you can do, and I don't really care which one you could, which one you do. Um, there are two ways to deal with whether or not you're going to, or what symbol you're going to use on the two. Two is included in this one, right? It says greater than or equal to two. So here are your two options. One is to make a filled in dot. Some textbooks will use that. Another option, and this is the option that I tend to go with when I'm working problems, is to use a bracket. So a bracket is like this, right? It's straight up and down. And it opens in the direction of your shading. So the bracket would open to the right because your shading is to the right. I don't care which one you use. Whichever one you like, whichever one you've used in the past, whichever one you feel more comfortable with, go with it. Um, the next one does not have that equals underneath it, right? So I'll show you what happens on that symbol when we get there. Taking a look at number two though. What would I do to solve this for K? Yeah, it would multiply by five. So I'd have K on the left. I didn't multiply or divide by negative, so the sign stays the same. And then four times five is 20. Okay, so in terms of graphing, here's my number line. <laughs> The important value I'm considering or looking for, I'm going to focus that as the number 20. Am I shading to the left of 20 or to the right of 20? To the left. I need numbers that are less than 20. That is to the left. And here's where you have two options. One option, because there is no equal sign underneath, is that you can make an open circle at the 20. So it's a circle, it's just not filled in. So there's an equal sign you fill in the circle. If it's not equals, you know, if there's not the equal underneath it, you have an open circle. So if you're familiar and comfortable with that notation, go with it. The other possibility is that you use a parenthesis as opposed to a bracket. A parenthesis means that I can get really, really, really close to 20, but I can't quite reach it. So 19.999, all good to go. 20, I don't get 20, okay? So we can either use parentheses and brackets, or you can use open and closed circles. When I continue to work on the problems, I'm going to use open. I'm going to use uh, parentheses and brackets. That's the way that I have um, adjusted to using. I like them the best because it lends itself really well into um, another type of notation that we'll get into later. So that's the ones I'm going to continue to use. But if you want to use open and closed um, circles, more power to you. Okay, any questions on either of these problems before I switch slides? Okay, um, moving on, we're gonna get into some more complicated, more multi-part pro problems. So what would I do on number three first? Add seven. So direction of the sign didn't change because I added. 11 plus seven is 18. And then I would divide by six. Still didn't divide or multiply by a negative, so the direction of the sign stays the same. And 18 divided by six would be Three. Okay, so I'm going to write my number line out. <clears throat> number that's important on there is three. Is my shading to the right or to the left? Left, because it says less than three, right? I mean, correct? Yeah, less than three. Do I use a bracket or a parenthesis? A bracket, because I have an equal sign my bracket and my bracket is opening toward my shading and if you do have colors then that's fantastic if you want colors um, I'm happy to get them out does anybody need a color does anybody like a color stop shut I've stopped sending them around I even stopped sending around the staplers how do they do that nobody complained yeah sure absolutely I would encourage you to do so Okay. 
You're right. I didn't send the sign-in sheet around. I left it in my office. So I'll have to mark it for you. I'm so sorry about that. I was... My goal last night was to actually update all of your new records, and in doing so, I realized that I still had a couple students that I inadvertently, Sierra and uh, Lauren, actually, that I hadn't sent requests to to join the, the new Canvas class, so I couldn't update anything. Yeah, it was my fault. I just didn't get all the years of the last two on my roster, and I just apparently didn't get all the way to the bottom of the roster. I thought I had. All right, those are coming around. Uh, problem four. What would our first step be on problem four? Subtract two, you're right. So I have negative x over seven. It's just subtraction, didn't multiply or divide, so two, four minus two would be two. Then what? Okay, multiply by seven. Do you think we could shortcut it? <coughs> we could multiply by negative seven to do it all in one step be kind of nice. Um, so I'm left with x on the left, and 2 times negative 7 is negative 14, but I have to flip it. I mean, I finally have divided or multiplied, in this case multiplied, by a negative. So instead of having a greater than sign, I will have a less than sign on this one. Now let's do a number line. Um, the important value that I've just found is negative 14. So will I shade to the right or to the left? left. This now says less than. Okay, I always look at the solution, the ending result. Am I going to use a parenthesis or a bracket? A parenthesis, and the parenthesis needs to open toward the shading. So it would look like this. Okay, again, on your homework, you're not going to graph every problem. If it says graph, graph. It doesn't say it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay, more going on on this one. Go ahead and give this one a try. After you have gotten to the point where you have a solution and an answer, compare with a neighbor. See if it matches. Finish, check with a neighbor, see if your shadings match, see if your solution set matches. If it doesn't, see if you can find where the difference lies. All right, so somebody tell me what you did first. You subtracted the two first, okay. Sounds good, we can do that. That would give me six y minus six is greater than 10 y. Karen, you wanna lead me through what you did next? Okay, so then I subtracted the six y. Okay. Okay, looks good. And then, okay, 
and what about your sign? Did it say the same? Good. Okay, so this is one way your answer might look at the end. If you flipped it around to rewrite it with the Y at the beginning, um, it would look like this, right? Flip the entire equation around, like, a, like spin it around, okay? Um, a little bit easier maybe to shade it if I have it written in that form, but certainly not the only thing you could do. So I, whoops, have a number line. Your important value on the number line is what? Negative three halves. And if you're thinking in terms of decimals, some of you probably wrote decimals down. What did you write? <coughs> did you write down negative 1.5? Yeah, okay, totally fine as well. All right, which direction will I shade? To the left. And I think it's easier to make that choice if I'm looking at this particular form of the equation myself. Okay? To figure out the shading. And then we'll have a parenthesis or bracket. Parenthesis, and it will open left as well. Not if you did it in the order that Karen did it. If you moved your Y's to the left in the problem itself, then the, then the sign gets flipped because you'll end up with a negative 4Y in your problem. So like up here, if you had moved um, 6Y minus 4, that's not equals. If you had moved the 10y to the left like this, then you had a negative 4y, then at some point you would end up having to, slip, to switch your sign because you'd be dividing by negative 4. It'll, it'll leave you at the same answer at the end. You're just doing it in a different order. Okay, so whatever the y is negative. Hmm? Whenever the y is negative. Yes, whenever the y is negative, you switch the signs. Okay. Now, I mean, in some regards, you could argue that from here to here we switched the signs, but that's just because we flipped our whole equation, our whole inequality around. We flipped everything. So, yeah. Okay, have another one that has multiple steps, kind of like this one going on. This one's a little bit different, though. Um, what do you see happening on this one that looks different than the last one? There's two of them, and they have the word or between them. Okay, so we're going to solve them separately, and um, I'll show you what we do in terms of a number line when we're done. So on the first one, we would add our 3. My 2x would be greater than 8 and we would divide by two, so x is greater than four. Okay, no sign switching, because there was no multiplying or dividing by negatives. On the second one, I would add seven. Three x would be less than nine, and I would divide by three, so x would be less than three. And I have a statement that at the end has or between them. So basically, I'm trying to solve one inequality or the other one. So any number that solves the first one is a solution. Any number that solves the second one is a solution, because either or is fine. Okay? So in terms of a number line, I keep using that same dotted one accidentally. In terms of a number line, I have two important values, if you will, on my number line. One of them is a 3, and one of them is a 4. We do need to put them in the right order. Okay? 3 comes before 4. Um, I'll just start with the first one I listed here. X is greater than 4. Where would I shade? I would shade to the right of 4. Do I use a parenthesis or a bracket? A parenthesis. On the second one, ah, let me go back to my yellow. X is less than 3. Will I shade to the left or to the right of 3? To the left. And will I use a parenthesis or a bracket? Parenthesis. So that's what my number line solution looks like at the end. So I'd like to show you where in the world this is all leading to in terms of like an actual word problem. So you've got a few word problems in the middle of this section, and they look and feel a lot like this particular one. Joe needs to earn $343 to pay for his car insurance for six months. His job pays him $7 per hour after taxes. 
What are the possible numbers of hours Joe can work to pay this bill? Use H for the number of hours Joe works and solve for H. Super real life example for my children. Their car insurance is due to me in February. So if Joe makes $7 per hour and he works for H hours, how could I express that in, a, um, in an e expression kind of format with mathematics? How could I express that? What would you do if Joe worked five hours? How would you figure out how much money he makes? You would take five times seven. So if Joe works H hours, what would you do? 7H. Okay, so we're going to multiply the number of hours he works, H times the 7. And how does that relate to the 343? Yes. It has to be greater than or equal to 343. That's what it has to be. He needs to make at least that amount of money. So, how would I solve this inequality? I would divide by 7. And what would h equal, or what would h be greater than or equal to? 49 what? Hours. And this is why my kids sometimes look at me and feel like that the only thing they're working for is to pay their car insurance. We don't have to have a car. Right? We could give away the car and then you wouldn't have to have a job. So. They don't like that a solution either. 49 hours just to pay for his car insurance. And I will tell you that uh, when my kids first started driving, their car insurance was closer to $600 every six months. It's a little bit less than $343 now. It's about $250. But, yeah, it's a lot. Do you know car insurance is expensive? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Okay, let me talk about the other half of this particular lesson. I don't think we're going to quite get finished today, but let me start it. Absolute values with inequalities. There's two different types of inequalities we've been focusing on. Ones that say greater and ones that say less than, right? I'm gonna do a play on words for you a little bit. I see the word or and the word and at the end of my words. And yes, I'm fully aware that greater is not spelled O-R at the end and less than is not really and at the end. Mnemonic devices help you remember. So just write them in for now and humor me for a moment. I'd like to show you an example of each one so you can see how they work instead of giving it to you in general because I think that it probably will make it easier. So we're going to do an example statement where I have a greater than symbol and I'm just going to make it greater than 7. Okay, absolute value of x greater than 7. Now think with me the kind of numbers that will make this work. Obviously the number 8 would work, right? What's the absolute value of 8? Eight? 8 is 8 greater than 7? Yeah. So one possibility is I could just flat out have numbers that are bigger than 7. That would work. Or 
See my word or there? Because it's a great tour statement. Or I actually could have really big negative numbers. So would negative 10 work? What's the absolute value of negative 10? 10. Is 10 greater than 7? Yes. So the other option is that x could actually be less than negative 10. I'm sorry, negative 7. Right? Because numbers that are less than negative 7 would be like negative 8 and negative 9 and negative 10. And all of those, when we take the absolute value, would become positive and would be greater than 7, right? So every time I have an OR statement, I will have two inequalities written with the word OR between them. One will say exactly, I mean, it will look exactly like the original one given without the, the absolute values. The other one will look like we have changed two things, the sign and the sign, right? The inequality sign and the sign of the value from positive to negative. That's if we have a greater statement. Let's say we have this exact same thing, but we have a less than statement. All I did was I changed this to be less than. So in this case, I need numbers that are smaller than seven, like six. Six would work, right? Five would work, but not every number smaller than seven would work. For example, negative 10 wouldn't work, right? Negative 10, when I take the absolute value of it, ends up being bigger than seven. So somehow there's sort of a beginning and an ending point of values that work when I have a less than statement. And in particular, it works like this. I can set up what I call a triple inequality. There are three pieces to it. Because the values I can pick have to be trapped. They can't go too far negative and work, and they can't go too far positive and work. In particular, again, half of the inequality looks just like the original inequality without the absolute value signs. And the other half looks like I've changed the sign on the number, and I've used the opposite sign on the inequality. Also, graphing this looks like that. So on this graph, i got to change that. On this graph, the important values are negative 7 and 7. And I shade on the outside edges. I've used values in this case that are, are parentheses values, but they would work the same if I'd used brackets, okay? If it were less than or equal to's and greater than or equal to's. And when I have a triple inequality, an AND statement, I end up with that same negative 7 and 7, but where will I shade? Inside, Inside or between them, right? I will shade between them, and I'll use my parentheses opening toward the shading in between. So let's try some, okay? <coughs> Every single time, we're going to isolate the absolute value and then decide, is it an OR statement or an AND statement? So, on the first one, what would I do to isolate the absolute value? Divide by 3. So I have absolute value of x, and I have 6 on the right. Is this an OR statement or an AND statement? It all hinges on this sign. What sign is it? It's a greater symbol, right? A greater than symbol. So it is an or statement. Super important because that tells you what to do next. Or statements. Do they make two statements or do they make a compound statement, a triple inequality? Or statements make two statements. So I'm going to have two statements with the word or between them. One statement looks exactly like I started with, and I remove the absolute values. X greater than six. 
What will the other statement look like? Negative six. It'll have a negative six. And a sign flips. It will be a less than sign. Switch the sign on the inequality, switch the sign on the numerical value. It's actually solved at this point. I don't have to do any more manipulating, but I am going to graph it. So the two values that are important are 6 and negative 6. Obviously in the right order. Do I shade on the outside or do I shade on the inside of an or statement? <coughs> I shade on the outsides. And this one actually ends up being an or statement with a um, parenthesis because it's strictly less than and strictly greater than. So that's what my shading would look like. We'll do number nine and then we'll stop for today and we'll finish it up next time. Tell me, what would I do to isolate this absolute value? I divide by negative two. So I have absolute value x on the right, four divided by negative two is negative two on the, I'm sorry, on the left and then on the right. What about my inequality? It flips. It flips. Oh, I had a typo, I'm sorry, let's fix this. This should have started out with a negative four. Switch that for me, my bad. Include that as a negative four from the beginning, just a typo. Okay, so I should have a two on the right. That's what I want for the problem. Okay, once I've isolated the absolute value, I need to decide, is it a greater than statement or a less than statement? It's a less than, it's an and statement, right? And statements, are they two pieces with the word or between, or are they a triple inequality? <coughs> triple inequality. Half of the triple inequality looks exactly like what I already have. The other half comes before it. And it's the opposite sign. So this is my answer. And we switched the inequality, of course, because we divided by negative 2. I don't think I actually said that because I was looking for my error. Um, and then our negative 2 and our 2 are listed. Do I shade between them or on the outside of them? I shade between them. Any triple inequalities, I shade between. And on this one, do I use a parenthesis or a bracket? Uh, parentheses again, because I just have strictly less than, strictly less than. All right, so what will happen is I'm going to hand you out the homework. Um, I have literally three examples left. We will finish those first thing tomorrow. So we still will finish everything on time. But this homework won't be due until the Monday after, <laughs> after fall break, okay? So um, I would encourage you to go ahead and get some parts of it done because tomorrow you're going to get from me a really lengthy review as well. Um, and you don't want to spend your whole fall break doing homework and reviews, right? Probably not.